And now we're moving on to the frame portion of the tools that we need to have in order to really master West Coast Swing. The frame is really exciting because it's the way we communicate with our partner. It, we can't use words, so we have to use the connection that we have. And so spending time learning your frame is probably the most valuable asset that you will have and it's the most valuable thing that you should study. There are four different types of frame positions we have. In swing, we have closed position, closed open position, open closed position, and open open position. Now, when you, tr when you travel through these different types of positions while you're dancing, it's important to understand how to manage and maintain them because it's the tool, like she said, to communicate with. In West Coast Swing, open, open position is the position that we use most frequently. Then there's open, closed position, and then there's closed position, and the least frequently used is closed, open position. Now, we have to figure out an open, closed position um, where this is exactly. This position is very specific because when we communicate, for the follower, it's the act, want, or need for her framework to go back to this open position, which is also called your home position. So home position is like this. If you outreach your arm in front of your partner and shake hands like normally, right, then your elbow is generally lined up with the front of your core of your body. That is a good normal spacing type of situation. When you come up here like this, for example, like, hi, Creepy. nice to meet you. It's a little weird, so it's too close. When you go back here, it's like, ah. Smelly. <laughs> don't really like that. It's too far. So this normal position is how far out in front to have this, to have your arms outreached. Um, now we're going to talk about the width. Now, if you put your arms to your side and reach them straight forward, you're going to notice that your right arm and your left arm reside on the right and left side of the side of your body. From here to here is my right side. Over here is the right side of the side of my body. This is really important because this allows us to determine the left and right balance as you go across the floor. So you're going to have that width, which is, which is generally just on the outside of her hips. All right, so the height, now we're gonna talk about the height. The height is always between her belly button and her waist. So her belly button and her waist is right here. And a lot of times what happens is this downward motion, because we're not used to being in frame, ends up like this. And we, this is the one thing you wanna try to avoid. The one thing you wanna avoid. So bringing this frame down has everything to do with moving closer to your partner. So closer, is better. This is just normal handshake position at this width and this height. And that is frame. It is very important to maintain your frame throughout the entire dance. So now that we know where the frame is supposed to be, I'm going to give you a visual. So if you have a stick at home or something about this size, it's really great to practice this, this especially once we get into the patterns. Okay, so if our hands are hanging to the side and then we lift just from the elbows and we keep our frame in front of us, we maintain our frame by not letting it move. Okay, my frame is going to stay very consistent no matter what my partner does to it. So if he pushes on my frame, it should make me move backwards. If he pulls on my frame, it should make me move forward. If he pushes on the side of my frame, it should make me turn. And if it pushes on the other side, it should make me turn. My frame maintains the entire time. Even when I go into turning, when the hand goes over the head, all that happens is that my arms raise, and then I turn from that position. So it's really important to maintain your frame, no matter what he does to it, because that's what creates movement. Okay? So it's a solid frame, but it's not a heavy frame, and we'll explain that a little bit later as we get into the patterns. Now beyond that, we have different types of connection within our frame. We have our standard connection, which is an extension connection, which is usually our home position. So our leader is going to take on the outside, and what that extension 
connection feels like is if you're standing on two feet and you're maintaining your frame, there's really not much of a connection between the two of you because neither one of you are supporting each other's weight and there's no action. Well, when we go into our home position, what it, the home position looks like is that my left foot is slightly behind my right foot. His right foot is slightly behind his left foot, slightly. And then our weight is back towards the back part of the center of our foot and we maintain our frame. This creates extension connection and that's as heavy as our frame will ever be because the minute he starts to apply some extension connection, what it really does is make me want to move over that foot and start my motion into the walking steps. That's extension connection. And Jason has a really great way of explaining the amount of tension. Okay, so here's an exercise and you need a buddy. Or, yeah, you need a buddy. So what, <laughs> <laughs> so what you want to do is you want to have two hands just like this in our, in our open frame connection. You're going to spread your feet apart, probably about shoulder width. What you're going to do is you're going to maintain your frame, that is, it shouldn't move. Yeah, it shouldn't move. So keep it still. And what we're going to do is we're going to sit. The further down you sit, maintaining your frame, the heavier we become. Because as we sit, we rely on our partner more and more for our balance. As we progressively stand up, we rely on our partner less and less and less and less and less and less and less, and less until zero. Zero is not touching. So if you're touching, you at least have some type of a percentage of weight. So there, there's a scale. We have 100% to zero. And that allows us the opportunity to move her around the floor and to give her certain types of speed and motion and all the things connected with being able to communicate. So one thing that you want to do, and remember while you're doing this exercise, is this is an important exercise to maintaining your frame. Because trust me, you will want to break that frame. The very first thing that I usually see happening in classes is that we don't want to feel that heaviness when we try this exercise. So what happens is that as we go down, we extend the frame forward. You'll see a lot of that. So you really want to make sure that you do not let the frame go forward and that you, you allow yourself to feel the heaviness of the connection as you raise down and as you raise up. Because later on, your leader is going to be using that downward connection to create momentum. So that is the extension of the frame and also the percentage of the weight that you're supposed to feel during the connection. Now the next one that we use most often is a compression connection. And all that is is our weight going towards the ball of our foot, which leads our body slightly forward. And if we maintain our frame, it's going to create a push or a compression connection. That's how the leader stops his partner and changes her direction during compression or moves her backwards. Now there are a couple of things to avoid, like you need to avoid tipping yourself forward, for example. This motion actually brings most of your weight up. And when you do a compression, the, the, the point is to stop. So as you move forward, you need to be moving down through your core and moving forward. So you have that into the floor action as you compress for this stopping type of action. So we're always centering on the center of our body, which is right around the lady's hips area. So when we start our movement, you want to be sure that that's where you're leading from. So practicing your framing, knowing where it belongs, and remembering to bring it back to that point every time is going to be crucial before, again, before we even learn the patterns. Besides the um, compression and extension, we have expansion and contraction of the frame. And we do that, again, I'm wanting to keep my frame where it's at, where it is. So my leader is going to apply pressure um, on the inside or outside? From the outside. Outside in. first. And as he applies pressure, I'm going to maintain my frame. So um, this is a very interesting structure right here because at 100% expansion for, of her frame, these hands should be together. That's 100%. That's as hard as she can possibly work to keep her frame going back to this position. Now remember, it's the act, want, or need for her frame to go back to this home position. So as I compress, for example, this should feel like it gets stronger and stronger and stronger, right? So this is 100%. If I let one side go, 
all of that pressure gets released and she turns. So if I... I don't recommend 100%. <laughs> yeah, you don't ever really need 100%. <laughs> but what you do need is you need some of that to be there so that you can take a step and travel. Notice that when he let me go, once again, my entire frame moves with me. And when I'm turning, I don't leave any parts behind. It stays right where it should be. Now, this is one of um, the most uncommon frameworks that are taught in West Coast Swing. And this side-to-side -side action helps you in all aspects of doing stuff. As you move your partner forward, you can, and then backwards, you let go of one side, there she goes, and she moves across the floor and rotates. Um, you can do the same thing coming forward. You can let go of one side, and here she comes. So this is a very useful tool as you continue to learn West Coast Swing. Now, the, that's just her expansion of her frame. And expansion means that I am contracting while she, she is expanding in order to keep this in this home position. When I go from the inside out, it's the contraction of her frame that works and the expansion of my frame. So as this works the same exact way. So if I let one side go, she turns. If I let the other side go, she goes. Now it's important to understand from a leader's perspective that we are not trying to push. We are releasing. The release of tension equals momentum. So when we're doing this expansion, we'll go back to expansion for a moment. When we're doing this expansion, we have this tension. I'm going to leave my right hand right there as the wall so that when I let go of this pressure, all of this has somewhere to go from. All right. So when I let go of this, it all goes from there, which is different from releasing this and pushing her, which is a whole bunch of extra effort I don't want to get into. <laughs> so it's all about compress, release. <laughs> so you release that stuff. Same thing with the inside. We have expand, release. So you have to keep one of your hands there as much as possible, maintaining our frame as well. It is important that uh, you realize it doesn't take very much pressure. So right now we're sort of showing a lot of pressure, but really it takes very little to accomplish movement in your follower if she maintains a good solid frame.